Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good day, good evening. Bonjour, ça va bien les amis? Euh, bonne journée, bon après-midi, bonne soirée. Alors c'est Gaétan, chef Gaétan si vous voulez. Gaétan, c'est la même chose. Euh, Aujourd'hui, on a de la poutine. Alors la poutine, c'est un mets québécois. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, I really that I, I realize that a lot of you like watching these video. I also find out that most of you were watching or are watching on your cell phone. Um, I hope you enjoy. Uh, they are designed to be seen on a larger screen. If your uh, phone can broadcast to your television or to your laptop uh, or your computer screen, that would be even better. Alors, je me suis rendu compte que la plupart de vous, d'entre vous, vous regardez les vidéos sur votre téléphone. Alors, les vidéos sont conçues pour être regardées à l'écran. Alors, si vous pouvez projeter l'image sur un écran de télévision ou sur votre moniteur d'ordinateur ou sur le laptop, alors le portable, alors ce serait une meilleure image et ça vous donnerait une, un, un meilleur sens. Bah, les choses étant ce qu'elles sont, je sais maintenant que la majorité d'entre vous regardez sur votre euh, téléphone cellulaire. Now that I know that most of you are watching on your téléphone cellulaire, I'll make some adjustments to make the visual a little bit more appealing to you. So, today it's the poutine. Aujourd'hui, on fait de la poutine. Poutine is a meal came from Quebec. It came from an area of the, we call the Eastern Township, Les Cantons de l'Est, uh, au Québec. Et il y a une dispute entre qui et qui a vraiment créé la poutine. L'histoire uh, à la base, c'est que la poutine vient d'un petit kiosque sur le bord de la route. So the poutine came from uh, Quebec, Eastern Township, which is a southeast of Montreal and there's a farm area and on the side of the road in the 50s was a little trailer selling hot dog, hamburger, french fry and coke. So out of the small trailer 16 feet or so long, 22 feet maybe, was that seller, that uh, merchant and he was next to a farm and the farm was making fresh cheese. In the process of cheese, the first coagulation of the milk, you can take the first coagulation of the milk and extract that and it's become curd, cheese curd. And the gentleman took some cheese curd and put that in the french fry and mixed that with his own gravy and that became the poutine. So, dans les années 50, il y a un petit propriétaire de, de kiosque où on vendait des hot dogs, des hamburgers, des frites et des, du coke, du Coca-Cola. Et il était loge, le, non loin d'une ferme. Cette ferme-là préparait du fromage et la première euh, coagulation du lait forme des, des, des motons de solide. Alors, si on extrait ces motons de solide-là à la première coagulation du lait, on appelle ça, euh, en anglais, le curd, on appelle ça des crottes de fromage en français. Comment? Fromage en grain. Alors, le fromage en grain a été utilisé avec des patates frites chaudes et une sauce brune que le marchand a créée dans sa petite roulotte. Alors aujourd'hui, on vous fait les poutines ou la poutine, la recette de base et les variations sont infinies. Alors j'ai fait, comme vous voyez, j'ai fait le... J'ai taillé les pommes de terre, je les ai rincées. I did cut the, as you see, I cut the potato. I uh, wash them, dry them, which is very important. So first step is I will use this fryer 
And I'm using an electric fryer um, for two reasons. First, safety. Second, consistency. Alors, j'utilise une friteuse électrique. Et la raison pour laquelle j'utilise une friteuse électrique, c'est pour deux raisons. La première, c'est la sécurité. La deuxième, c'est euh, la, la, pré la précision. Alors, il est possible de répéter les mêmes températures et les mêmes conditions et garder consistant, de façon consistante, la qualité des pommes de terre frites. Alors, French fry, that has nothing to do with the fast food French fry that you get at this big place with the M or a King place or whatever other place. This is real fresh potato and we have in this case, we have canola oil. We can have peanut oil. Uh, I did also French fry in the past with olive oil. It's also delicious. And we are going to have two cooking, two dunking. So the first cooking is at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe it's around 140 Celsius, maybe 135 Celsius. And that will be for about four minutes. And I put that there and I put that in the bat. I start the timer. This is going for four minutes. Meanwhile, what we need to do is to do the gravy. Alors, les pommes de terre, ça se cuit en deux étapes. Alors, après avoir, la, avoir taillé et lavé les pommes de terre, j'ai fait cuire une première fois à 325 degrés Fahrenheit, c'est environ 135 degrés Celsius, mais peut-être 140, ce n'est pas exact, c'est dans cette ordre de grandeur-là. On fait cuire ça pendant 4 minutes, et, et pendant ce temps-là, on va préparer notre gravy, notre sauce brune. So, meanwhile, we're going to do the, the, uh, the gravy. Let me bring my supply. First thing to do, I'm using coconut oil. Put about a tablespoon of coconut oil. I made the coconut oil melt in the, in the pot. As it's melting, I'm going to have add crunch garlic clove like that. Already it smells very good. It's a little bit too warm. I'm uh, controlling the temperature, going lower. Especially if you're doing a sauce or a gravy. If the temperature is too high, you're in trouble. So temperature, I did lower the temperature. It smells very good. So I have some uh, alors j'ai mis de l'ail avec l'huile de coco, l'huile, l'ail, oups c'est pas la bonne, c'est pas le bon casseau, mon casseau est ici. Alors je vais rajouter un petit peu de farine à l'huile. Et on fait un roux. So I'm doing a mix of coconut oil and flour, and it's called a roux. You're with me? A little bit more flour. So the roux is getting together, making a little ball. We need to cook that a little bit more. We don't need to have, we need to have the flour cook in there. If the flour is not cooked, then we're in trouble because we have raw flour. Okay, so the, This has beep. That's mean the first cooking is done. 
Now I go for the second cooking. Here we are. Now we need to have the temperature go higher. So the sauce, I'm mixing. Make sure that everything is, is good texture. Right now, it's pretty silky except for the garlic in there. See how smooth it is? Alors c'est un peu comme une béchamel, mais on la fait vegan. Alors je vais avoir besoin d'un peu plus d'huile, euh, de jus de légumes. J'ajoute un peu d'huile de légumes, de, de jus de légumes. So I need to have a little bit more broth. This is a vegetable broth, organic vegetable broth. And we're doing good here. This needs to be thick, but not too thick. Okay, this is very nice. I need to season that with pepper. There's already, already a lot of flavor. Il y a déjà beaucoup de saveur dans le, le consommé de légumes. So there's already a lot of flavor in the vegetable broth. I'm adding just a, a dash, a touch of uh, pepper. And the pepper will add a little bit of uh, hum, a little bit of uh, shabang, a little bit of spiciness to the sauce, and it's looked pretty good so far. And one other ingredient I'm putting there is the, this is tamari sauce. If you don't have tamari sauce, you can have soy sauce. And look what happened. The tamari sauce will bring the saltiness Alors j'ai mis de la sauce tamari. Sauce tamari, c'est le résultat de la fermentation de fèves de soya. C'est le compagnon du miso. Et le tamari va ajouter un petit peu de goût de sel. En plus d'ajouter le, le goût de umami qui est recherché dans une, dans une sauce brune comme ça. Alors on a la consistance qu'on cherche et on a la couleur qu'on cherche. Alors c'est important de garder ça très au chaud. Alors je vais me déplacer ici et je vais mettre ça à simmer juste pour garder ça chaud. Ok, the second, the second uh, cooking cycle for the french fry, the temperature is 375. Alors pour la deuxième cuisson des frites, on va à 375 degrés. Je pense que 375 degrés, c'est 180 peut-être. Je pense que c'est 180. Alors, je vais juste vous montrer un peu les pommes de terre. Qu'est-ce qu'ils ont l'air après la première cuisson? Elles sont un peu blanchies, mais on voit que la cuisson s'est faite. Alors, deuxième cuisson. On descend là-dedans et on fait le... et c'est pour trois minutes. So the second cooking, 375, three minutes. And in three minutes, you will have magnificent French fry. This is a 90 seconds out of three minutes, half the time. The potato I have used today are the red skin tomato, uh, potato. So the potato I have used today is a red skin potato. You can use Yukon, you can use Roslet. It will give you excellent result. The quality of the uh, red skin potato, when they fry, the, uh, the sugar intensify in the potato and then your fry look or taste sweet. 
It's a natural sweetness. Alors, les pommes de terre que j'utilise, c'est des pommes euh, rouges à cause de la couleur de la, de la peau. Et euh, c'est une pomme de terre qui est riche en sucre. Alors, quand on fait frire les pommes de terre, le sucre naturel à l'intérieur des patates augmente, s'intensifie. Et ça vous donne une frite très sucrée et très légère. Alors, première étape, on coupe, on lave, on rince, on essuie. On fait une première cuisson à 325 degrés Fahrenheit. On attend un peu, on monte la température à 375 et on fait une deuxième cuisson pour trois minutes. So, just uh, steps, simple. You cut, you wash, you dry the potato. First cooking, four minutes at 325. You pause, rise the temperature of your, uh, of your fryer, and then you're good to go. So this is a three minute cooking time at 375. So what happened is the first cook, King period, make the fry blanch. The potato become blanch. They are cooked, not completely, but just enough. The outside is, is cooked, the, in, the interior become like a little bit soft. The second dunking, the second cooking at 375 will crisp the outside of the french fry, finish cooking the inside so you have an inside which is soft and mushy. And then the outside is crisp. And I will pass that in this one here. And this, this go here. So this is the time to put some salt in there. I have some salt. And if you hear, I don't know if you hear the cracking, but it's cracking. Uh, so the poutine takes shape like this. We have cheese. So I have two types of cheese. And you put your cheese you want. Uh, this is like a relatively dry cheese. And it's a uh, pressed cheese. So It's almost a fresh cheese, like a curd, and that will become chewy under the, you taste it, and you have the sound of chewy. Alors, ce fromage-là, c'est un fromage euh, pratiquement frais, qui a été boulé. Et puis, euh, quand on le mange, ça fait squick, 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 squick. Et alors, c'est un peu la, la perfection des, euh, des poutines. C'est d'avoir un fromage qui fait squick, 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 squick dans la bouche. The, uh, the, the, when we're looking for the poutine, and especially the cheese, when you have fresh curd, when you eat the fresh curd, it's squeak. Squeak, 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 squeak. It's a very interesting feeling in your mouth. So the second type of cheese I have here, it's a dry mozzarella whole milk, mozzarella. You can have vegan cheese, you can have any cheese you want in there. And then, to finish the dish, the sauce is here. It's still warm, because I put on the, and we pour the sauce, the gravy. Alors on met la sauce brune sur les pommes de terre, sur les pommes frites. Et on en met assez, mais pas trop. Alors, voici la poutine. This is like the real thing. You have here the poutine. So, one step, two step, three step. Now I've seen, I've seen poutine. I've seen poutine in five, Well, not five star, but yeah, fancy restaurant. Uh, in New York, in Toronto, in Chicago, in France, in Paris, and people are, they went crazy about it. Some will add mushroom, green pea, etc. They put anything there. We're vegetarian, 
you can put pineapple if you like. You can put, I will not suggest to put tomato because it's too wet, but I would suggest any vegetable of your choice, caramelized onion, anything will do it. Mushroom, asparagus, your choice. So let me taste the poutine with cheese. So this is the squeaky cheese. Mm. Mm. You know when I wipe my hands like this? Ah, mm. 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 Lovely. This is absolutely delicious. You can do it. You saw how to do a gravy. I did the gravy. This is, the, the gravy took me in front of you about what, four minutes, three minutes? Cutting the fry, first cooking four minutes, doing the gravy while the, the, the oil was warming up in three minutes or so. Put the uh, French fry for the second cooking, three minutes at 375, and then you have it. Now the other one, cheese, it's mozzarella. It's more. Mmm. Mm-hmm. To my friend Niraj from Toronto, please join me, we have poutine. Thank you everybody, merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you for watching, thank you, for, thank you very much everybody. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for your thumbs up. Uh, share the video with everybody. Our audience is going like, like that. We're very happy with that. I receive very good comment to everybody and everybody's looking forward to see the next recipe. So today the poutine, oh, by the way, the name poutine came from the word pudding. And since the person who created poutine is a French Canadian, he mixed the word Poutine, pudding, and make it his own word, poutine. Alors, the inspiration for the word poutine came from the word pudding, and this is what we have here. It's like a pudding of french fry, gravy, and cheese. On this word, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for subscribing. S share with your friend, share with your family, but better yet, do the recipe yourself. Alors, merci pour vos euh, abonnés, merci pour vos commentaires, merci pour les thumbs up. C'est bon que vous puissiez vous abonner, c'est bon que vous puissiez partager la vidéo avec vos amis. Encore mieux, faites la recette, vous m'avez vu faire, vous savez que c'est possible, ça prend pas de temps. Merci, à bientôt. Bye bye!